Good afternoon and welcome to another instalment of our Uni Talk series. I'm Adam Deveni. A few weeks ago, Theresa May announced that Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty will be triggered in March 2017, taking the UK out of the EU. Since then, prominent EU figures, including French President François Hollande and Jean-Claude Juncker, President of the European Commission, have made it clear that they will only offer hard Brexit or no Brexit. Well, joining me on the sofa today is Dr. Carmen Stoyan from the University of Kent's Business School and an expert in the EU as well as international business. Dr. Stoyan, thank you for coming to see me today. Thank you for having me. So what I want to know is you sent a letter to an MP discussing how we should either be holding a second referendum or, where, or discussing it in Parliament. So since then, uh, you also talk, spoke about economic affairs that were misrepresented and the, the, the public was misinformed. Uh, what measures and what, sorry, what uh, information were you particularly referring to in that? I think one of the things that wasn't spelled out very uh, well in the campaign, the Leave campaign, was uh, the options that we have, whether it's hard Brexit or no Brexit, and also perhaps uh, the um, contribution of immigration, uh, immigrants to the uh, British society wasn't, uh, was overlooked. Um, the whole campaign um, focused on the negative impact that immigration brings, but um, the freedom of movement of labor uh, from the European Union and the single market as well that is associated with immigration brings a lot of benefits to companies. Uh, NHS uh, employs a lot of um, uh, people from Eastern Europe or other Europeans. The universities benefit from talented um, lecturers and other uh, labor from the European U Union. And this really contributed to the success of the British economy and in terms of exports and the prosperity. Um, also, agriculture benefits from them, um, the hospitality industry. These are industries uh, that really benefit from um, labor from uh, the European Union. And without them, these uh, uh, industries will um, suffer quite a lot in terms of um, jobs um, and in terms of growth and prosperity um, bringing to the UK. Do you think that post-Brexit we've become a lot more hostile to foreign workers since then? There is a little bit of a feeling and there's this thing about shaming, naming and shaming companies that uh, um, employ foreign workers which perhaps didn't go down well uh, with the society or with the foreign workers. But I think uh, on, on the whole, I think the society um, We'll find a way to welcome us back in a way, but uh, there has been a bit of a feeling difficulty towards uh, mm. uh, difficult feelings towards. Um, you also leadership. sorry, yeah, you also called the EU a bargaining chip for businesses in Britain. Uh, now that we've lost that bargaining chip, is there anything to prom uh, provoke foreign investment still into businesses? Well, th some investors will still want to come to Britain to tap into the British market and sell goods to the British um, consumers. But many mis businesses, like American businesses, Japanese businesses, other businesses, locate in the UK to sell products, cars or um, uh, food or things to other uh, countries in the European Union. And uh, of course, from that point of view, Britain will be less appealing to foreign investors. And also the bargaining chip is in the WTO. In the WTO, uh, at the moment, Britain is part of um, Negotiates, negotiates uh, deals as part of the European Union. If we um, leave the European Union, obviously we'll have to negotiate on our own. So the bargaining chip uh, is very strong as a European Union member and the EU would lose a lot from um, leaving uh, the European Union. Yeah. Now you've mentioned that being part of the European Economic Area is also the terms of our agreement with the World Trade Organization. So what, uh, how difficult will it be to renegotiate a deal with the World Trade Organization? Well, with the WTO, we'll still be members of the WTO as well, Britain, but um, once we um, are no longer part of the European uh, Union, we'll have to start uh, uh, negotiating our, no f our own free trade agreements with the world. At the moment, the EU has around 60 trade agreements that we benefit from because they've negotiated them. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have to start again, so it takes a lot of time and a lot of expertise to negotiate these agreements. And under until we do have these free trade agreements in place, uh, we'll have to um, trade on the terms of the WTO. That means we'll have to pay a lot of tariffs on things that we import. For example, Primark imports lots of uh, garments for ladies uh, from Bangladesh. At the moment, uh, these uh, imports are uh, free uh, of tariffs. Um, once um, we quit the European Union, um, the imports will cost at least, will add um, a tariff of 12% which increase the price of these garments. This will either affect the um, uh, profits of 
Primark or the costs for consumers and their prosperity. So, um, yes, it will be more difficult for the UK to negotiate within the WTO. Um, and also then in the short run, uh, there may be lots of costs associated with doing business. So whether or not we uh, strike up a better deal than we had before with the WTO, there will be an interim period where we'll be considerably worse off. Yes, the, 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 the transition period, unless some sort of agreements are uh, negotiated and the British government wants to put in place transition agreements, um, they probably will not be all comprehensive and we will be worse off for, for a certain period of time. Uh, how likely is it, though, that uh, we'll negotiate a better deal than the one we had while in the European Union with WTO? Is that something we can get a sense of now or is it still too early to say? I think it's too early to say in a way, but WTO is quite a, it's an organization that allows negotiations for free trade and they're quite slow in negotiating um, uh, liberalization and better deals. So I think our best shot was being part of the European Union. The European Union uh, as a bloc uh, has more clout, has more um, uh, power, economic and political power, and they can put more um, pressure on other parties to, to um, to, to cut, cut tariffs and things. Yeah. Now, uh, before the EU referendum, a lot of the sentiments from Leave campaigners were that we are the star player, so to speak, in the EU, and that they lose out when they lose us. Um, is that still the case? Uh, are they, when we're negotiating for a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit, will they be more inclined to give us an agreement that we'd per like uh, based on that? There's no doubt that the British economy is a, um, it's a good asset for the European Union and the European un Union needs us. But on the other hand, the European Union doesn't want a country to get away with splitting from the European Union without um, in very good terms because it will create perhaps the need and will in other countries to jump ship. And uh, the European project has taken a lot of time to build. It brings a lot of advantages for many economies, for many people. And um, destroying that project will actually um, make everybody worse off. But if there are some other nationalistic uh, parties or feelings in other countries and other people are taking um, the idea of, um, oh, let's get rid of the European Union too lightly, like it happened in a way perhaps in our referendum, that could be a, a threat to the European Union. And of course, they will not want to do that. That's why they only want hard Brexit rather than or no Brexit, uh, whilst the British government, of course, would like a soft Brexit, and this is the problem mm -hmm. we have, because uh, um, Theresa May obviously wanted to have a very strong relationship still with Europe and uh, with uh, Germany and other economies, and yet uh, she needs to deliver a Brexit, and uh, it's difficult because the Europeans don't want their project and their competitiveness and their prosperity affected by countries that leave the European Union. So they are not going to... Um, give the same advantages to a country that leaves as the advantages that the country is still in the European Union. Mm. Now, we've spoken very negatively about the EU so far. Uh, are there any positives to be taken out of it, whether it's soft Brexit or hard Brexit? Will any businesses, even local businesses, uh, benefit from having left the EU? Well, I guess some some firms perhaps they don't like the bureaucracy that comes with the EU, and then maybe that uh, would limit their costs. Or but um, the EU, um, as many f firms do benefit from being in the EU for by exporting there freely and um, um, economies of scale, making it much cheaper. Um, so uh, some, may very few, perhaps will uh, um, will um, be affected positively, but overall, perhaps uh, um, they, there's lots of benefit that our firms derive. From being in the EU. What business? What should businesses be expecting in the next few months? Will there be a great amount of uncertainty? I think the the thing that this Brexit uh, comes brings is uncertainty, and investors don't really like uh, uncertainty, and that's why we see uh, signals from uh, the banks, for example, trying to relocate the operations from uh, the city uh, because. Um, they uh, may lose their passporting rights. This means passporting rights give them the option at the moment to uh, uh, operate very quickly in another country if they already have a license to operate in uh, London, in the city. So if we, um, uh, this bre Brexit uh, um, makes them worse off, so some companies may um, decide to, to move um, away from the, European, from the UK. Yeah. Well, Dr. Comstor, thank you very much for your time. And that's all from us now, but do remember to follow us at the Centre for Journalism on Twitter and Facebook. 
Thank you. Goodbye.